Hello, and welcome to Engage and Translate, text and audio chat in over 100 languages. I'm Sarah Weldon, Product Manager for Google Cloud Translation Services, which include APIs for pre-trained and customizable machine translation models, and a new beta API for supporting streaming audio translation. More on that later. I'll be joined later in this talk with Dale Markowitz, Applied AI Engineer at Google Cloud, and she'll bring some of the features that we are discussing to life in a couple of demos. Today's companies, their employees and their customers are truly global. And every day, they're also more digital. Keeping pace with the exchange of information in multiple languages at scale is a growing challenge, especially so when more work is moving to virtual. So companies are turning to machine learning to augment their workloads and make content more accessible faster than would be possible without automation. Luckily, advances in machine translation continue to drive up quality, and new features on our products give customers more control over how their content is translated. More on that later. Let's take a quick look at where we started. Pre-2016, the world was relying on statistical machine translation. As an example for this, we take a, a set paragraph from a, a Japanese uh, language, and we translate it into, into English for readability. So in this case, this translates as Kilimanjaro is 19,710 feet of the mountain covered with snow, and it is said to be the highest mountain in Africa. It's a little awkward in how it's written, as well as there's some words missing if you're a fluent reader. But if we fast forward to today, um, we've done a lot of work to improve machine translation using machine learning. And so we introduced, Google introduced uh, neuromachine translation after 2016 and into 2017. And under that new model, uh, this same translation would come through as Kilimanjaro is a mountain of 19,710 feet covered with snow and is said to be the highest mountain in Africa. It's a much more fluent translation. It doesn't feel awkward, and it's a good number of words. But we keep improving even beyond this. In summary, the last major jump in quality we saw was in 2016 to 2017, but we've continuously improved over the years as well. And in the most recent year, what you see with this graph in green, we saw an increased jump over multiple languages through a number of different technology investments driven by our research teams. And it averaged a five point blue score jump over 100 plus languages. And this improvement is comparable to the gain observed years ago when translating from statistical to neuromachine translation as I spoke about a few minutes ago. So our products include Translation API Basic, Translation API Advanced and AutoML translation. And then the new one that I was talking about a little bit later. For Translation API Basic, the implementations on it are really intended for simple use cases. It's intended for user-generated content where you're not trying to control a lot of the specific translations. So we wanted to make it very simple to use. Um, and so Translation API Basic does do important things still with language detection. And it also continues to use the advancements of the new machine learning models as we release them and develop new languages. But you can use Translation API Basic for chat scenarios and user-generated content because it's easy to integrate with and you're not trying to change the translations after the fact for a number of these cases. But um, in this user-generated content, it still is really easy to use and will enable you to easily integrate with many languages at a very simple platform. As an example case, I'll tell you a little bit about a gaming scenario where we had one of our, our customers, um, in this case, Elix, which publishes games in mobile, mobile gaming chat. And their gamers are international. And so when the gamers are wanting to talk to each other and collaborate in order to achieve certain goals um, or to just chat online, they sometimes need to be able to cross between the multiple languages. And so by integrating with the translation API basic, Elix is able to improve the engagement experience for their end users and be able to improve the overall gaming experience just by connecting in with our APIs. But this isn't just specific to gaming or to tech. Um, it's actually really useful for government scenarios as well. So let's talk about another customer scenario, this time public sector. Within the US, many languages are spoken and governments are required to make information accessible to their constituents. 
Let's look at how machine translation can help with this scenario. So I'll turn it over to Dale. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm Dale. I'm an applied AI engineer here at Google. And I'm talking to you from Austin, Texas. Texas is a really interesting state because it's actually the second most multilingual state in the US after California. And something like one in three people don't actually speak English as their first language in their homes. So it's really important, especially in times like these, uh, that the city is able to, con to communicate with constituents in their own languages. So I recently had heard about this project. It was actually done by the state of Hawaii, where they use the Google Translate API to automatically translate a bunch of legislative documents so that all of their constituents could understand the documents. So I kind of wondered, could I do the same thing for Austin? So I decided I would go to the Austin website, and I found a bunch of different questions that people ask, you know, where do I take out my garbage, or how do I report a leaking fire hydrant? And I decided to build a chatbot that understands questions and then gives the city's answers. But I used the translation API to be able to detect what language people are asking in and then respond in their own language. So let's take a look. This is a chat app that I built to answer questions about the city of Austin. It recognizes lots of languages. So for example, if I ask how to check if I'm registered to vote in Spanish, it will detect my language and use the translation API to respond in the same language. The translation API supports over 100 different languages and lots of different character sets, so you can write your app code once and have it work all over the world. So the demo that I just showed you, it was working with a chatbot that had some preset answers, but actually the architecture works exactly the same for any sort of chat. Like for example, if I was building a chat app to chat with Sarah and we wanted to use two different languages. So let me walk you through how it works. So the first thing you might have noticed is that you didn't actually have to specify what language you wanted to use chat in. That's because the translation API, if you give it enough text, can actually tell what the language is. So the text gets sent from the chat client to a server, the translation API detects the language, and then it translates the sentence to English because my chatbot only understands English. Then once the chatbot replies, we use the translation API again to translate back to the, the sender's language and send the response back to the chat app. And that's how you can build a translation chat app. Now, this worked really well for the majority of the, the cases that I tested, but there were some where it didn't do that well in terms of translation quality. And those are the cases where there was some really specific, like Austin terminology, like the name of our metro system, uh, or some really specific um, uh, words for things in Austin. So I'm going to hand it back to Sarah, and she'll tell you how you can improve quality for domain-specific cases. Thanks, Dale. That was great. Now let's talk about what we can do to modify content to better represent different possible translations within a language, depending on the industry context or location. So in this scenario, I'm thinking of public sector again, and it's a pretty common thing to want to be able to provide comments to a, a public agency. In this case, let's say the attorney general. Now, in, if you were talking to, um, to users that are in Spanish, they're speaking Spanish, uh, there's a pretty common translation for your attorney general, which is fiscal general. Um, so in this case, our machine translation would automatically select this for the, for the translated response. But there are other countries, uh, say in Latin America, that might have a different version of what they call their attorney general's office, in this case, Ministerio Publico Fiscal. Um, but even in California, we actually have, they actually have a pre-described glossary. And if you look at that, they refer to their attorney general's office in Spanish as Procurador General. So what if you could customize your translations to your domain? If translation API advanced, you can actually do this. And if you have a terminology base, which a lot of public organizations do and companies do as well, um, then you can use this as your starting point with an easy integration with Translation API Advanced. Because you have your English terms and your terms in other target languages, if you just create this into a CSV file and import it into your Google Cloud project, then you can use this with future cases for machine translation just by referencing your glossary in your translation API call. And then when you get the response back, it'll actually preserve your preferred term over what the pre-machine translation might have otherwise predicted. 
And Translation API Advanced also has other features that can help with both scaling your implementation as well as more advanced customization capabilities with our custom machine translation models. All of it can be done through one API uh, integrated with your GCP project. But let's say you have even more than just terminology and you want to go further. You're a company or an organization that has a lot of past human translations and you want to be able to use those translations to improve the machine translation prediction for what a translation would likely be for your content, your context, or your industry. So in that case, um, it's really important to understand conceptually that Google has both pre-trained models, which is what you typically use with machine translation API advanced or our translation API basic. Um, and these are pre-trained models that we've created using a lot of training data. But if you have your own training data, you can actually use those as a starting point and then build and improve on them with a custom training on an AutoML translation. So by taking your past human translations, bringing that to our platform and running trainings on it, then you're improving the statistical and like mathematical likelihood that our model is going to provide back to you a translation that's tuned to your context and to your industry. So it does this through transfer learning um, and it has an entire platform where you can go and learn and manage more of these models um, to integrate it with, with more advancements in your platform. But now let's go back to our chat scenario. Our chat app uses the right language, but it doesn't speak. It's actually just using text translation. So if, since users both write and talk, there are scenarios where we might wanna have audio as well as text translation supported for our, our use cases. So can we translate speech in real time? Organizations are seeing value in delivering their products and content globally. And it's not just in text, it's in video, it's in audio, it's in calls. And so for these scenarios, you wanna be able to have an easier way to implement translations for those use cases. And it's applicable in media entertainment, it's applicable in technology, and it's applicable for service providers that might be trying to support customer support cases. But what's so complicated about translating non-text data with audio and video? We have our speech APIs and our video APIs that allow for interacting with those types of content. And we have translations, so we can just integrate between all three of them in order to be able to get an outcome. But it's kind of hard to do. And it comes with other challenges that are nearly impossible to solve on the developer client side. So we're looking at how to solve that on the cloud side. For one thing, latency can be a lot higher if you're integrating across multiple APIs, especially if one is set up for streaming and the other one is set up for more synchronous cases where it's waiting for the, the content to finish before it starts to figuring out what a translation would be. Additionally, you have to do multiple API calls. So that can be complexity for developers to work with, especially if they're trying to figure out how to improve accuracy, et cetera, across these two different APIs. And then you're also dealing with a streaming client, which creates some complexities with integrations and usability, and um, it's, it's a challenge in itself. So Media Translation API simplifies this process. It supports directly audio files or microphone input, say through a mobile phone or through your browser. And it also accepts that content directly. So you're not having to run through a, a speech model first and then a translation model in order to get a translation back. You can go directly to translation, media translation API with your audio, and you'll get back a text translation in the language which you've set as your target language for your translation outcome. In addition to abstracting away the frictions of multiple API calls, um, we have some other features that overall improve the experience. So automatic punctuation detection, as well as using enhanced models for video or telephony, use cases allows you to be able to um, make the most to get the best quality optimized for your audio translation outputs. Um, and then we also have language support because it's a translation model. Uh, so we support French, German, Italian, Hindi, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, English, and others um, for you to be able to translate multiple languages for your user base. So with that, I'll take it back to Dale and should we can see the trans media translation API in action. 
Thank you, Sarah. So as a developer, I can confirm that it is tricky to do anything in real time, especially real time translation. But the Media Translation API makes this a lot easier, which is great because there are so many times I want to do real time translation. Like um, imagine if I'm doing a live stream and I want users all around the world to understand it. Or maybe I'm giving a talk in person and I want different audience members with different languages to get what I'm saying. So I'm going to show you something that I built with the Media Translation API and a Raspberry Pi and a mini projector. And let's take a look. Hi, my name is Dale. I'm using the Media Translation API and a Raspberry Pi to translate what I'm saying in real time. So that is what I'm bringing to my talk next time I give a talk somewhere that speaks a different language. And with that, I'll give it back to Sarah. Thanks, Dale. I wanted to close with uh, some thoughts from one of our translation customers for Media Translation API. When they integrated with our Media Translation API, they were able to see gains in the latency as well as the overall quality of performance. Um, and so they're able to provide real-time streaming translation for video chat. OnePlus is a phone provider, and they've created a beta application that allows for their customers to be able to opt in and be able to see the translations from the person that they're speaking in a different language while they're still engaged with them in, in, in video chat. And so with this, we're able to demonstrate how text translation, audio translation can work seamlessly together to create a better end user experience. To close, I wanted to point you to our documentation on our cloud website where you can get more information on AutoML translation, translation API advanced, and our new media translation API. Please check them out. Thanks for joining us.